Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, please take your seat, if you can. We are starting now. And welcome, everyone, to uh, this Launch and Awards session. Uh, we are going to officially present the second edition of the Youth Atlas. When, welcome uh, uh, once again, I'm Veronica Piccolo, and I will be the online moderator for this session. Um, Mohammed Ali will be the uh, on-site moderator for this session. Mohammed Ali will be the online moderator for this session. Um, and Humud Pararo Velasquez will be uh, our rapporteur. With me on site, I have Anya Django from the IGF, uh, uh, the IGF Secretariat, and Nadia Tiaya for, uh, from Eurodic. And online, I can see uh, Kuliana Novaes. Hello. Kuliana is the head of editorial of the Youth Atlas. And um, we will start uh, very soon for this presentation. Um, but just a reminder, I would like to request all the speakers and audience um, who may ask questions during the open floor to please speak clearly at a, at a reasonable play pace. I would also like to request everyone participating uh, to maintain a respectful and inclusive environment in the room and on, in the chat. You can ask questions during the Q&A. If you are on site, please approach the microphone. If you are online, please raise your hand so that you can be unmuted by the tech. And um, if you have any further question or comment or would like the moderator to read, uh, to read out your question or comment, please type in the Zoom chat. Without further ado, I would like to start the presentation of this book. Uh, some of you might already know this. Um, this book is, called, is the second edition of the Youth Atlas, and it follows the first edition, uh, uh, which was published in 2019, and it collects all the stories of young people active, actively engaging or working into uh, the internet governance ecosystem. Um, we, have, uh, a f we, ha we have been honored by a foreword by Vincerf and the preface uh, of Anya uh, Django. And um, this book particularly is divided in uh, four sections. The first, which contain data and statistics about the, the development of youth engagement over these two or three years. Then we have a first session, which we call the veterans, with all the interviews of people engaging in internet governance for three or more years. And then we have the session for, uh, for the section for the newcomers. And uh, in the end, we also have a section dedicated to all youth programs. And, uh, and in this regard, I would like to uh, quickly give the floor to Juliana to explain us a little bit about uh, the content and findings of the put. Thank you. Thank you so much, Veronica. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for coming to this session today. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not in Japan this time. It's around 6 a.m. here, but I, I can feel the energy in the room and I'm happy to be with you in, in spirit, if not in person. <laughs> Uh, I would also like to thank the youth uh, SIG from ISOC for having me as a collaborator of this project again, of the second edition of the Youth Atlas, and especially for Veronica for all the effort that she put into this project. Uh, so thank you so much for this. Uh, so about the, the Youth Atlas, uh, Veronica rightly mentioned, this is the second edition of a uh, first book that we launched back in 2019, uh, part of the Youth ICG from uh, from ISOC and the idea came from a conversation that we were having with some people that had uh, previously participated in fellowship programs uh, to attend the IGF, such as the, the ISOC uh, fellowship program, the Brazilian fellowship program and, and other ones. And we were always saying how, how there were always moments in which the organizations that fund these kind of programs wonder exactly what are the results that come from these initiatives. Uh, so basically uh, what happens to the young people after the, they join the IGF and they participate in, in, in these kind of events. Um, 
So essentially, what's uh, what's the outcome of the investment that they are doing in, in these young people? Uh, and we all know, as former participants, that there are many success stories out there. We all know people who first joined an IGF and then got a position at some at some organization or started their PhD on the topic or then started working for the government or some kind of uh, multilateral entity. So we all know these success stories, but we didn't have at the time any kind of documentation or formal record of the young people who had previously participated in this program. So it was very hard to measure the impact of them in the lives of young people after they joined uh, the IGF. So this is how the idea of the first edition of the first uh, Youth Atlas started. So we, we, we decided it was time to record uh, the results uh, of the young people and their trajectories after they joined the, their IGF and show the importance that these fellowship programs had in their lives and the importance of maintaining them, maintaining these young people in the IGF ecosystem. Also to show, to show some of the difficulties that they face as young people joining internet governance for the first time and continuing their trajectory in this field as well. Because, uh, I mean, a lot of improvement has been made in terms of youth representation in the IGF in the past years, but it hasn't always been that inclusive. So it was hard in the past to get sessions approved at the IGF if you were part of a youth organization. It was always hard uh, to get funding to attend the IGF as well. It still is, uh, but it, it was way harder back back then than it is now so uh it was a it was also a project to show how some of these difficulties remain in our in our ecosystem for for young people so uh then we first made the first edition of, of this book uh and we had very limited budget at the time and also very limited time we put the whole book together in, in, in less than three months and launched it at the IGF Berlin 2019. And now I'm so happy to see that this the second edition, which now shows not only uh, the trajectories of uh, people that had been previously in the in the IGF ecosystem, but also the newcomers. So we can see a contrast between the people who have been joining these events for, for over three years uh, and the people who are just joining now. So what are the differences in their hopes and their expectations in the challenges that they face? Um, and uh, I mean, without uh, uh, going much further into this, uh, I also think it's important to mention that this book has only been made possible with the hands of several people, uh, a lot of volunteers who have worked hard in editing text doing interviews and putting their own free time into this initiative, as it often happens with youth initiatives. Uh, we often work on a volunteer basis uh, using our free time to do this. So uh, I just wanted to show my appreciation for all the volunteers that have collaborated with this. Uh, and also to the people that actually participated in our surveys and interviews, entering our questionnaire. Uh, a lot of things in our IG ecosystem are the product of volunteer work. So we're also very proud to say that every single person that has contributed to this project has been credited uh, there. Uh, so I, I, I would just like to personally thank them so much for, for making this possible. Uh, and of course, this is a book uh, which aims to give visibility, well, to, to you as a young person and to me as a young person as well. Uh, and give us credit for for all the work we have done since we started uh, participating in the IG ecosystem. Uh, we want to build a healthier culture in internet governance, a more collaborative culture in which people have more freedom to to participate in in initiatives. Uh, and we have the power to do this as young people. Uh, and we hope that this book is a source of pride and is a source of inspiration for young people uh, either joining the internet governance ecosystem now or who have been here for, for a long time now. And we hope that this helps foster more initiatives such as this, and it helps to empower uh, more young people in our field. And uh, in saying this, I would like to thank you all again, and I hope you're all enjoying the IGF in Japan. Yeah. Thank you, Juliana. Um, I'm 
particularly um, sensitive uh, in this moment. Uh, um, this was a very hard work, and as Juliana pointed out, it was mainly on a volunteering basis, and um, we put our time into this uh, into this book. Um, our free time into this book, and uh, it might not be uh, perfect, so you might also come across some mistakes, some typo and, uh, and errors, and, uh, but um, I think that this is, um, this is uh, the token of cooperation, of international cooperation. We had people working on this from, uh, from uh, Brazil, from uh, Africa, uh, from Europe, and uh, we had an amazing support from our friends uh, from, uh, from Japan, uh, because this book was, um, was uh, is the the product of the work of uh, many hands, and uh, I'm very proud to present this at the IGF, but this also was printed in Japan. <laughs> so it was also, is very representative of, um, uh, I mean, of, uh, uh, of our global uh, meeting here and uh, what's, uh, what this IGF uh, is, uh, is meant for us. But, um, I know that uh, this book has attracted a lot of attention. Uh, maybe you online, you, you don't know this, but I already have uh, some copies <laughs> reserved from people who came to me asking to have a copy of this. And uh, at the end of this session, we will distribute, we will have a picture with all people featured in this book who are, who are also uh, here at the IGF. And uh, we will distribute these copies to them and and also to the people attending. But uh, I would also uh, give the possibility uh, to Anya uh, to come in. And um, first of all, I would like to thank you for the time you took also um, to write uh, your preface for our book. And um, for you, from you, I would like to know since since 2019, when the first edition was uh, was published, how the work of the IGF uh, secretariat evolved um, to support young people, because most of the people also present here they were not even able to um, you know to know how uh, the youth summit was even uh, created. So, thank you. I hope you can hear me. No. Okay, I'll use um, Veronica's tool. Uh, first of all, it's such a great pleasure to be here. Okay, this should work. It's a great pleasure to be here, and uh, on behalf of the United Nations Internet Governance Forum Secretariat, I firstly would like to sincerely congratulate Veronica, Juliana, but also Internet Society Youth Standing Group on this remarkable output of what I know is a product of goodwill for sure, but also hard work. It's not easy to gather young people from around the globe to make sure that no one is left behind to create an inclusive story. Uh, but I know you are guided by your energy to do all this in your voluntary capacity in addition to your schools, um, in addition to your jobs, in addition to your commitments to your families, friends in general to your life. It takes a lot of time. For the IGF Secretariat, it's a great honor to be featured in this uh, wonderful publication, and it's such a good feeling to hold it finally in, in my hands. And I sincerely would like to thank you for including us in this process, and of course for leading this process. I do think that for years since you, you were since the program was created, uh, we have been at the Secretariat witnessing the change that you are making, globally speaking, uh, and creating uh, channels for young people to really feel from inside what does it mean to be involved and to have active voice in internet governance processes, including, uh, of course, the Internet Governance Forum. Um, to respond to Veronica's question, I think the response is that we have been learning from you for all these years. The uh, 
YCIG, for example, the standing group as well, they exist for several years now. While the IGF Secretariat, together with, of course, its other structures, such as the MAG, such as also the leadership panel and the support, as you can see, this atlas also received from the chair of the leadership panel, Mr. Vincerf. We all have been learning from you just because a formalized, uh, inclusive youth track as a form of capacity development uh, for engagement of young people was introduced um, in uh, after Berlin IGF in 2019. Uh, and I think the breaking point was really 2019 when we said we need to do more, when we saw what young people at the IGF in Berlin have done completely organically in a self-organized manner, organizing various sessions, press conferences, participating actively in the other sessions of the program, and uh, just proactively engaging in discussions which definitely can lead to decision-making processes with senior stakeholders without necessarily having the open, um, not invitation, but I would say invitation was always there, but just a mechanism for you to go easier through the channels of integration into the decision shaping and decision making processes. And so in 2020, we decided that we have to react to the calls for young people to ensure that there are processes which can enable engagement of young people um, in a meaningful way in the Internet Governance Forum processes. And uh, we established the youth track as a form of capacity development uh, project within the IGF and something that really corresponds to the mandate of the IGF. But given the fact that the IGF um, knows only one way of working, and that is open, multi-stakeholder, bottom-up, inclusive, transparent, always working with others and always listening others before any decisions are made, we knew that uh, the only way to start the youth track, to design it, to brainstorm on the way we can advance it, is just uh, to in, in a way of cooperation with all the young people that are willing to join us. We are in a very good position, and from year to year, I have to say that position is even better, that there are many youth IGF initiatives, many capacity development youth-centered international initiatives that are working closely with the IGF Secretariat, with various members of the MAG, uh, on, um, on bringing youth voices into the processes. So since we had that, that mechanism, we just grabbed on it and uh, we connected better, even closer, with um, all of you that are here in the room. I think I, most of you I do recognize. Uh, youth IGF coordinators that are the driving forces between many of the IGF processes in many countries and regions. And uh, as you know, we started working on organizing a um, couple of... Um, very concrete ways of engagement. Uh, our goal was always to be inc as inclusive as possible. And believe me, that can be very challenging when you're sitting in a small office in Geneva and you want the whole world to be engaged in your process and your job is to serve the whole world. Uh, what helped us to overcome that challenge and to find a meaningful way to do this is to connect with the coordinators and to have our coordinators as the focal points in so many countries and regions where our voice could be then transferred to young people living in the countries and regions of the coordinators. And I cannot express enough our gratitude to the youth IGF coordinators for everything that you're doing and for being such great partners to all of us. It is really thanks to you that the youth track is becoming um, just useful, I would say, for uh, many young people uh, from around the world. The form, as you know, of the youth track was changing from year to year. Uh, we were brainstorming, we were learning by doing, learning from our good practices, from mistakes we made. And so in, uh, after 2020 and then after, 20, well, 2020 was the online edition of the IGF and it was a very important year for us because we received, uh, we worked with hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of young people. And the feedback that we received at that time was young people are ready to work, not just to talk, but really do a concrete work. But we do have a criticism, and that criticism is that we don't want to work just among ourselves. We need to work with those who are holding positions of power, so with senior experts and leaders. 
And for us, that was very, very clear message that was channeled. So in 2021, we had um, an extraordinary support from the host country, from the government of Poland. And throughout the year, we were working on outreach. Thanks to precisely a wonderful methodology of our host country, we hosted together with young people from around the world webinars that had thousands and thousands of young people from different parts of the world joining. That was really a game changer for the youth track and in general for the youth engagement. Um, in Poland, we hosted the youth summit. It was, I think, the well, second edition within the youth track, but certainly it was, there were other editions organized by different uh, youth IGFs at the, at the annual IGF meetings. So um, the youth summit was um, in Poland, good opportunity to create um, space for a dialogue between senior experts and leaders with, of the current generation and then the next generation of experts and leaders. And we follow that practice. Of course, we work on uh, polishing the format, making sure that we are creating just simpler, easier entry points, channels for young people that can decide to just jump on our train and then ride with us toward hopefully a safer digital future. In Ethiopia last year, we continued the practice. Um, we, the Secretariat was satisfied with the level of engagement with young people. Uh, this, certainly the process there went further from organizing a couple of sessions to ensuring that we have a robust mechanism throughout the year. So we worked very closely with the regional IGFs to organize capacity development workshops and to ensure that we have our presence, not just at one annual meeting, uh, given the fact that we are limited in time, we are challenged by time zones and so on, but that we have presence at the regional IGFs to uh, maximize our inclusion opportunities. Grateful to the regional IGFs, uh, to the youth regional IGFs for being our great partners to work on organizing and implementing capacity development workshops there. This year, for example, we managed to tour the globe in just a couple of months span. Uh, from Finland, Tampere, we went to Cartagena in Colombia, then to Brisbane in Australia, then to Abuja in Nigeria. All thanks to Eurodig, thanks to Asia Pacific IGF, thanks to LAC IGF, the youth LAC IGF, the African IGF and the youth associated IGF. And then Finally, after so many discussions, conclusions, agreements, but I'll say also disagreements, great ideas shared, we met here in Kyoto. And uh, you know that on Sunday, I think all of you have seen, the, have seen you there, we held a very successful uh, IGF 2023 Global Youth Summit organized by all youth IGFs uh, and uh, many other initiatives which are youth-centered and that work closely with with all of us. It's a result of uh, year-long preparations, so nothing is an instant result. It really is a product of hard work. And I have to admit a wonderful energy. Uh, I have a pleasure to work with colleagues coming from the youth IGFs. Not an easy work for sure, but you always, regardless of how much time you spend, how much just in intellectual effort you invest, how much physical effort it takes, these are time-consuming processes, you're challenged with time zones, so sometimes you're sleep deprived. But it's such a wonderful energy that exists uh, among the youth IGF coordinators that you just don't feel the fatigue and you just feel that enthusiasm that regardless of the environment that is surrounding us now, geopolitical ten tensions, you see wars around us, you see people losing lives, you see the dark side of the internet, victims of online frauds, many online abuses, and still working with young people, most of, a lot of them, digital natives, people growing up with technologies, just understanding them because they don't have other choice, it really gives not just hope, it gives confidence that our future, analog or digital, is very much bright as long as we have you empowered to lead us toward that. And the IGF Secretariat is committed to continue working with all of you. We will definitely add this wonderful Quo Vadis Youth, second edition of the Youth Atlas to our library, and I'm sure it will be consulted so many times. Many of the faces here that you see uh, are our dear colleagues and friends, but many are new. So I'm looking forward to meet you all uh, here uh, 
toward the closing of the 18th annual IGF meeting in Kyoto, but also, of course, online. We're lucky to be connected through the means of the internet, and let's please use it. And finally, to conclude, I want to thank uh, all of you for being here at the 18th annual IGF meeting. I, can, I think we can uh, say that from the youth perspective, from the way you channeled your voices and from the way it was heard, it was a great success. And it wouldn't be a success if it wasn't for your commitment, for your dedication to uh, allocate time, efforts, and ideas to these processes. The IGF Secretariat is truly grateful to all of you for that, and thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you, Hanya. I think a lot has been done so far since uh, we have been we have gone a long way since 2019. Um, we have experienced firsthand um, that a lot of uh, youth IGF initiative have been set up uh, in the last year. Um, we have um, here Emilia as well as trained um, one um, has helped um, set up uh, the. If, the youth IGF in, et in Ethiopia after Addis Ababa uh, last year, so uh, we could actually work on this initiative ourselves. And I think that the global engagement of young people to empower them each other, it's, uh, it's a great example to, go to, to give to senior stakeholders. I know that you have to go. I would like to take a picture with you. <laughs> There was a signed version. Yeah. Yeah, this is a very important moment. Mm -hmm. so I think there was already a signed version. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I showed it to you. Or maybe you can just let me sign it. Okay. And just colleagues, uh, I really have to apologize. I would uh, wish that I could stay here because I know there will be a wonderful discussion. But as you know, uh, the Secretariat needs to wrap up this meeting and prepare for the closing. All the reports need to be on the website in the next half an hour. Some of them are on my computer, so I have to deliver on that. But thank you so much. Let us please connect. And uh, after the closing ceremony, I will be around, so uh, I would really appreciate if you could approach, if you have a couple of minutes just to chat and exchange contacts and uh, to understand how you found this year's IGF and uh, when is your IGF so we can come there. It's, it's always easier to be at someone else's IGF and just enjoy the discussions. Thank you so much. If you have a copy of the Atlas that is signed, please do give it back to me. I think that's <laughs> my version. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, let's uh, move forward. Okay, uh, do you want to come here? Let's move forward because uh, we also have another guest uh, talking about uh, IGF attendance and the uh, first comer. Uh, Pirate Ruby was uh, was uh, is a 14 years old, is a teenager who last year attended for the first time his first IGF, and uh, being the only teenager, she was wondering. There are a lot of young people, but. Not everyone is actually real young. So I would like to give the floor to Pirate. Pirate, are you online? Yes, I am. Hello. Let me just get my camera on. Hello. It is nice to meet you all today. I'm so happy and so proud I am able to attend this today. Um, it has Hi, been Pirate. such an honor working as the youngest person in the IGF 
uh, youth track at 14, and it's so exciting. Thank you, Fayrat, for being here, and um, thank you for um, borrow your face and uh, your experience to this book. Your experience, uh, your um, interview is also contained in, uh, in our book. But uh, my question to you is, um, how is to be a teenager uh, in the IGF environment? And you joined the IGF one year ago, attending the Youth Summit for the first time. And since then, I know that you have worked a lot in this environment. Give me one highlight of the work that you have done so far. Well, I think it's personally been great. But one of the things that um, I'd noticed is that due to the time zones, I always have to be up a bit late, which is not a problem. But I think it's a bit funny. Anyways, um, I'm so happy to be working with all of you and it's anything to be honest all of this is a highlight for me and i'm so happy and proud to be working with all of you thank you um what is the main um let's see activity uh, that you would like to share with uh, with the audience today the activity that you care the most, the, I know that you have done a lot this year. And um, for example, you are one of the founder of the Teen Dynamic Coalition. Can you tell, tell us a little bit more about this? Well, recently the Dynamic Teen Coalition um, is like, it's newly came out, so there's not too much information on it yet. So hopefully in the future, there will be more to learn about that, but it's just recently opened, so. Thank you. Thank you, Pirate. I think that um, your uh, experience and your example um, are very important to engage young people that are really young, that are really teenager. And uh, I'm very proud to get to work to you. And I'm very happy to have you in our team and to have your interview. Uh, Pirate uh, profile is one of the highlight. And is in the book, you will also find um, a QR code in one of the introductory uh, article about the, um, written by Stacy's. That is, she's Pirate's mother with uh, Stacy's playlist on Spotify. One aspect I would like to highlight a bit about this book is that we have the printed copy, but we also have a digital copy. And um, you will find a QR code that you can scan and also uh, watch video interviews of uh, some of our people that we were able to interview and the QR code to, pir to Pirate Playlist. So many thanks, Pirate. And, um, and speaking of... Um, the evolution uh, that young people have uh, have gone through this uh, this past year. I would like to pass the floor to Nadia. So the first youth summit was held in Germany. I think you were there. No, you were not there. But I know that you have worked a lot in the European community to empower new generation, and some of them. <laughs> I have actually remained in this environment. And I know that also your research focus is on youth engagement. Would you, uh, would you like to give us some highlight on this? Hello. Hello, everyone. And thank you all so much for coming uh, to this extremely important session. And I also just would like to add my congratulations to everybody who worked really hard on this and all the uh, people who supported and sponsored this publication. It shows the effort, the interest, the engagement that young people have to be involved in these spaces and the different ways and methods that we try to be involved. And I think that is really important and it is really difficult to map because um, some things are very invisible. And through this beautiful publication, some of these things that are happening behind the scenes, some of these things that you may never have known about them existing on a wider, uh, on a wider scale, 
have come to light in front of this. And another example of, uh, of invisible things that you may not have known is that um, Veronica also actually organized with a really large team of uh, international uh, youth an event during this IGF to bring youth together um, to exchange ideas, exchange um, uh, their experiences, but also make new friendships for further collaborations so that in a few years there will be a new youth atlas with people who are from this IGF working on new projects together. And, and for this reason, um, I think it's really uh, admirable that uh, this has come out from it. I wasn't there at the Youth Summit in Germany, and the reason why I, um, I ended up not being there is because um, I was excited to see what information was going to come out from those sessions. I knew what was going to be there. I could have been there in the room, but what I wanted to see is the youth coming into the IGF and listening how youth would actually be presenting their ideas. If you already know what's going to happen, sometimes you tune a little bit out. There's a lot of information going on at the IGF and you need to, um, you need to focus. But what I loved about the Youth Summit is it allowed people for um, an empowered message. They came into the rooms in a group, they discussed with each other what they wanted to say, they planned how they wanted to say it, their thoughts and ideas were concise, clear, and visible. Being part of, of something where we can support each other, standing at a microphone can be extremely intimidating. When you don't know anyone in the room, you're there for the first time, you've never been to this country before. This is my first time in Japan, and I'm not wearing sleeves, and everybody is, and I feel very self-conscious about that. Would I then still want to be on a microphone, et cetera? But I feel supported. I feel that I am here with people who, uh, who are um, kind and open, and that allows me to speak uh, more what's on my thoughts and on my mind. And I hope that we can then continue fostering this continuation of uh, participation that is supported by our peers through activities like this and bringing in new people from, from these spaces, from our local communities. And this is why um, I started looking at how we could have meaningful participation at the Internet Governance Forum. I'm a PhD researcher at the United Nations University, and uh, I'm based in Bruges, but I also coordinate youth activities for the European Regional IGF, which is called Eurodig, and our, um, our event is called the Youth Dialogue on Internet Governance. And if you live in Europe and you would like to attend, our applications open in January. <laughs> but the most important thing I would like to wanted to say is that it Meaningful participation, we hear that word so many times. The UN, United Nations Secretary General added it in his Our Common Agenda. The UN Youth Envoy uh, wrote a paper on meaningful participation. And I wanted to know, what is meaningful participation at the IGF? The IGF strategy does not give a definition of this. When we look at um, the outcomes from the IGF, we see how many people are attending, the stakeholders, et cetera. It's numbers, who's here, presence or who's represented your affiliation. And does that say enough about you as a youth? Youth that has so many definitions based on age, based on uh, your uh, status as a newcomer or, or, or not, based on how far you are in your career track. There's so many different ways. So the definition that I chose to use is, was adopted from uh, a paper from Malcolm which looked at processes. How can we make sure that processes include youth inclusion, integration? And I created a framework that looked at how do we participate? Because we always say, you know, when you're here, you need to do X, Y, Z, and then you're part. But are you really then part of the community? Just being here, making a, making a comment, making a statement per se. I believe that we're an ecosystem. And an ecosystem it it consists both of content and structure. And I believe that when you come here for the first time, you're, there's a lot of information coming at you and you're being informed. That is a way of learning not only the content of this event, but also the structure of how things work. When do you get to be on the microphone? Who gets to speak? At uh, what point can you walk into the room? So right now, someone could walk under the room and I'm not offended by it. So then you also have a moment of consultation. So you're learning something, but then you're like, hey, I have a different perspective about that, or I am really 
not sure about that point. Can you clarify that? You then take this, the microphone and you comment and you consult, you add to the conversation and debate. And as you go along, there will be moments and opportunities in which youth then will take on leadership positions. Either you become a session organizer and then you work with a large group or a small group of people to provide content and structure to further debates. Or perhaps you, you start collaborating with the IGF Secretariat to create structures like the Youth Summit to, uh, to work in partnership with the IGF to foster youth spaces. And this ecosystem can go up and down. So at one moment in time, you're still being informed. So you could walk out in the next session and you're a speaker at the other table. Or you can walk out of the session as a speaker now, like I am now, and then I'll be sitting in an audience somewhere and learning. It's an ecosystem. And when we then look at participation at the IGF, I am asking you to look at it as a process. So when we're saying we're going to invite 30 young people and 30 young people means that there's participation I'm asking you to think of it as a process. When you're inviting young people to your table, to your events, think about it as a process. You're, they're coming in, what are they learning? What are they contributing? How can they start moving into being an empowered uh, person into leadership roles? But how can we ensure their sustainable um, participation, whether that's a, a continuous flow or the return of participants. And I'm very excited to continue this discussion because it's certainly meaningful participation isn't just this one framework. There's so many different ways of approaching it. And having these open conversations about is it definitely the way forward of how we can ensure that we are leaving nobody behind. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anya. I really appreciate actually the cons, uh, Nadia. Um, it's, uh, I really particularly appreciate the concept of uh, youth participation as a process because it's not enough that uh, a young person actually participate, uh, speak to the microphone and uh, talk, uh, ask questions and, ask and uh, formulate comment. But it's also a matter of engaging on an ongoing basis also with the community of like-minded people. And I think that uh, since 2019 we have gone a long way but uh, you know the title of this book is Quo Vadis Youth, so meaning w where are you going, youth? So my question for for Jenna here it would be how how do you see future the future of young people? Thank you, uh, thank you, Veronica, and everyone in this room to welcome me and, uh, and allow me to be in this position and share my thoughts. I kind of want to start up something because I, I think Nadia helped us with delivering some institutional knowledge memories as well as touching on a little bit on how we should envision youth participation. So that first thing I really want to point out is that we as youth should really put ourselves out there and to be on the same table as everyone. By that I mean, like literally, I wish we all are at the same table, because most of you are behind me right now, and it's kind of weird that I'm looking at myself and the back of that projector. Um, so, it, I mean, if you're not too busy, and if you don't mind, I hope that you guys can move to the, to, to the table, because I, I feel very awkward when there's like no one, and I have to be the only person speaking. Is really my own problem, and uh, and yeah, I don't know how many of you uh, been here. I, I I would say I'm fortunate enough to be here for like my six times now, and unfortunately, I think kind of old enough to you know it's time to back out because it's you you need to allow and make the space available for newcomers, which we have a lot. Consider I am. Well, I haven't introduced myself, actually. Consider I am the pro program coordinator of the Asia-Pacific Youth IGF with a lot of different mechanisms, working groups set, set up by all the youth and youth IGF from my region, for example. They are coming in very consistently, energetically, passionately, and so we, sh we, we should be prepared and then at least, like, first thing, not to be shy to sit at a table get yourself prepared to, to contribute. But so it takes time, one step, at, one step at a time. And I think it's really important for me and 
I hope it's important for everyone as well to hear from someone like Nadia uh, to learn about the institutional knowledge. And I think this is really important. And I only get to think about it like 30 minutes ago. Because uh, Nadia, Nadia is one of the first person in the youth space that I met. I met her 2018 in, in Paris. And well, I get so lost, or maybe I can test it out. Like how many of you have been here before? Not, not in Kyoto, but like been to IGF before. Can you raise your hand? So not too many. Let me try to overwhelm you with all the acronyms. Or maybe I don't need to try. Like what is dynamic coalition or, or what is NRI? Not all of us know, but in order to participate, these are really important. And so I think it's extremely crucial for um, people who have been in this place for a long time, like long enough at least, to proactively work with the youth community. Uh, that includes the veteran or dynamic coalitions or the national and regional initiative that might be your own country's IGF or your own country's uh, YIGF. Because uh, that's where you, that's where you're build, uh, you're from sometimes, and uh, you know you start from a safe space before you have the gut to put yourself out there and be fearless. Sometimes like it takes time. So, um, and um, this year I am fortunate enough that I was invited to. Um, one of the DC, uh, I mean, Dynamic Coalition, sorry about that, uh, so, sorry about the acronym. Um, and that Dynamic Coalition, for example, uh, cares about child rights in digital environment, and they are really interested in working with us. And I, I appreciate that because finally, all these spaces in IGF would want to work with us and uh, sometimes even people who've been here for like more than 20 years did not know that there is such global youth submit that's happened since 2019. And then when they think we need to do capacity building and they, they might, how they approach this is that they might start from scratch by consulting all the stakeholder, how should we do capacity building without, um, without really working with the youth. And so I, I hope that since we have a really big and strong team, put yourself out there, let them know. We work so closely with IGF Secretariat, specifically Anya, to put this youth track together. And we have a youth summit every time. And I hope that we will continue to have. And next is what will that go? Rather than just doing full workshop in different regions plus this summit, I hope that we can all bring this, um, you know, food for thought, bring it home and think what can we do other than just this five session? Because uh, I believe ongoing, um, ongoing effort is even more important than a one time, one hour session like this. And um, I would like to quote some um, quote a phrase from my colleague, actually, Luke Teo, uh, was on the table. He, he was helping with the Asia Pacific Youth IGF this year in Brisbane, and then the team behind it actually worked on a lot in designing the program that is truly, organ I mean, all of us do that, uh, to be fair. Uh, they are truly organized by youth for youth, and if we were to, work with other stakeholders, I hope that we should send out a message and let them know that nothing for youth without youth. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jenna. Um, I actually, um, I agree with you that uh, um, like if, if I have to take uh, some, some takeaway from, from what Nadia said or what you said, I think that the handover of knowledge is very important. I mean, it's very important to have in this system a person is, who is a veteran who can transmit knowledge and can actually, you know, um, mentor young people. Because it is not easy uh, to, uh, for a young person to be mentored by 
a more senior stakeholder because of um, gap in communication while a young person can see in a person in a young in, in a peer like a someone who can actually trust and uh, I see a lot of newcomers here and, and I know that you have been also accompanied by the other young people that have been here in the in this ecosystem for a few years and have been able no, to guide you in, a, in some way. Um, we have 10 minutes left, um, but in, I would like to have like three, five or seven minutes before the group picture to give the floor to a newcomer. I won't call name, uh, but if someone of you wants to come out to the microphone and, uh, and yes, yes. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm a newcomer to IGF. I'm FELP. I'm from Brazil, Brazilian Youth Delegation. And I was reached by a veteran in Brazil, Davi. He isn't in this edition of the IGF. And it was really nice of him to make me aware of the youth program there. And we just sat side by side. He helped me to sign the the application form and all that stuff, and that really changed uh, my entire car career. So, I'm I study at communications. So, in Brazil, it's kind of a study area that is not that into internet governance. And I think it's funny because uh, I see it from the outside. I see that internet governance has a lot to to how could I say that? a lot to move on with communication studies and communication strategies to reach more people, to make more uh, youth, youth people from all around the world aware of that and how we can make those spaces not only for us to watch them but, but to actually participate. So uh, as part of the Brazilian youth delegation we are a lot of people right here, right now. <laughs> I'm really, really proud to see those actions like this Youth Atlas and how we are being here with in, from different, uh, different backgrounds of studies, of areas of working, and to taking these spaces, especially being from the South or Latin, Latin America. So it's re really nice to be here and to see space to talk in those spaces and to reach each other and know other regions from the, around the globe and exchange some points of views. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your experience. I think that for all of us, it's very important to know that and <laughs> to remind us that we have been newcomers as well and for us has been overwhelming as well. Um, anyone else wants to come in? Denise? Okay, yes, but I'm also from, from Brazil and I am a former fellow from the Brazilian Youth Program. And I am happy for being here and for watch all the youth initiatives. And I also would like to highlight the, the thi one thing, which is we had a lot of sessions this, years, this year which were proposed by youth, young people. Uh, we had this big group where we've organized lots and lots of proposals and we've sent it and we've uh, made it until here and we've occupied this space and made our voices heard, which is very, very important. I'm also part of the Youth Latin American Caribbean uh, IGF, I can't, I have to say it because my friends are there <laughs> and looking at me like, remember, say, you have to say it. So um, we have a long way to uh, include all the people that we need to include and also in the Youth Latin American Caribbean IGF and also here, I think. We need more uh, voices from indigenous people and also people with disability and other minorities. So I want to be, I want to make this a point so that we can, we can work, work on it for the next events and not only IGF, but our events in our countries. And thank you for all the work we have done and you here, thank, thank you, thank, thank for all of you, and also for myself. Yes, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Let's keep doing the nice work and don't be sad when a session is not full of people. Be brave, keep going, and if even if you are nervous, your voice needs to be heard. Even if you make um, little mistakes on your English pronunciation, <laughs> keep going, everyone. Young people must be heard, and we must keep doing our job, our work here. Thank you. Thank you. Is there, um, okay, we have uh, only five minutes left. I just wanted to uh, thank you, uh, everyone, uh, for coming in. I just want to take this five minutes. I don't know if anyone wants to come in. I just, okay, one minute, one minute. Hi, uh, Zan Khan, um, former youth ambassador at ISOC. I just wanted to really quickly come in as I'm not exactly a newcomer, but I'm not exactly a veteran either. And I think a perspective in the middle is probably really helpful because I was on the exact uh, position where you know all of you are sitting right now. And to come from there, my first ever IGF where I knew absolutely nothing and I was not part of any youth program and I knew absolutely no one and just showed up, to having made a lot of potentially lifelong connections with not only individuals who are experts and academics and technicians in the space, but also lifelong friends, and to take your ideas and interventions from when you first start to the point where, for example, uh, two days ago, the work that I, along with other people, was involved with, with the policy network in internet fragmentation was being presented in the main hall. To go from nothing to that, it just shows you that youth participation can, in fact, be meaningful. And I want to strongly echo the point that even if nobody's there in your session or even if you don't know anyone or don't know anything, the learning curve is always going to be there. People are always going to be there to support. Um, and I really, really want to thank everyone who has been involved in that development journey. And I want to make sure that I can give back as well. So I'm always happy to be reached out to. And thank you to Nadia and Veronica, who I've worked with personally. They've done an amazing job of teaching me the ropes and hopefully moving forward with the youth programs as well. And thanks to everyone who's actually been involved in youth programs as well, because they are very, very impactful. So that's what I wanted to say. Thanks. Thank you. I just want to uh, take another minute. I know that uh, there is another person who wants to come in. We, is not, she is not actually a newcomer, but I would like to give the floor to her. Thanks, Veronica. Can you hear me? Hi, everyone. Um, no, I'm definitely not a newcomer, but I feel like the, uh, the different youth participation programs... I, IGF is very special for me because... Um, I came in 2018 in the uh, in the coldest European winter, really nervous, having no idea what to do, how to do it. My colleague back then didn't get her visa. Um, I was thrown into a BPF session where I was a panelist. I mumbled a lot. Um, I still regret that recording, but my <laughs> point is, um, yeah, the idea is to keep going. Um, these programs help me make uh, connections, uh, lifelong friends, uh, and uh, they all kind of build fruition into me having a career in the space. Um, I work on a lot of uh, different IG issues, uh, but it's all because of uh, the different working groups, uh, the different speaking sessions. I have uh, become uh, a public speaker in so many different foras, and I do owe it to a lot of the different participations, writing sessions, late night sessions, conversations with so many of you here. Um, thank you, Yao, for all of your support <laughs> and so many other people uh, who have been there. But my, my whole point is that you should uh, take all of these things um, seriously and things do increment. Uh, it takes time. Um, it builds time, but also people should also understand is that our space is getting more relevant. Uh, issues of privacy, um, AI, or any other issue that you want to work on uh, will grow over time. There are, there's more money being poured in, uh, and it is a viable career option for a lot of you. Uh, so never give up, and we uh, are the future. 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just want to point your attention to the screen. You will see uh, a QR code uh, to our digital version uh, of the Youth Atlas. Uh, people, those who are on site will have the privilege to the, get a copy of the printed book. Uh, and uh, But before closing the session, I would really like the young people who are here on site, who are featured in this book, to come here and take the picture and to take your copy of the <laughs> Atlas. And uh, thank you, everyone, for attending this. Thank you also for the participants online and uh, to Mohammed for sharing everything. <laughs>